Matt Frivola versus Gennaro Valdez. We got minus 180 on Frivola and plus 160 on the debuting Gennaro Valdez. Now, Valdez, if you guys watched his contender series fight uh, against Patrick White, you guys were more than likely entertained. Absolute slugfest of a fight where both these guys knew that the contract was on the line and they knew they had to do it in an impressive fashion. And luckily for Valdez... He had his low spots in that fight as well. But luckily for him in the second round, he's able to land a beautiful punch to knock out Patrick White and secure his contract. But goddamn, the man was close to a minus 1100 favorite that night. And he almost let it slip through his fingers as uh, Patrick White was putting up more of a fight than he had expected that night. But Patrick White, Alaska FC product. And if you guys have been following me for a while, you guys know I love fading Alaska FC products. But to have that close of a fight with a guy like that is a bit of a red flag for me. Now, uh, Gennaro Valdez, I feel like a lot of his uh, regional success has come against very low-level competition, right? Uh, his Guzman fight where the guy was 6-4, and four, uh, it seemed like he slipped in that fight and Valdez was able to take advantage of that, getting the fight to the ground and then eventually finding the finish. The Arzimendi fight, the guy was 8-3, and three, decent record, but it didn't seem like he had much wrestling game at all and uh, Gennaro was able to take advantage of that. Uh, Bautista 1-2 and two, gives up a standing rear naked choke without almost with nearly no resistance um so there are a couple spots uh throughout his career on the regional scene where you can be like okay maybe the the skill difference was just too vast and by too vast i mean like he's mediocre and all these other guys were very low level uh he has decent power in his hands but when he when he gets most of his success going it's with the takedowns it's when these getting these guys to the ground and uh really just kind of grinding them from on top uh but the funny thing is if you guys go back and watch his portalis fight where the the kid was 4-0 going into that fight portalis controlled him for the majority of that fight before he ran out of gas and then valdez was able to find himself on top of him and then eventually get the finish of his own uh i'm not sold on him man i'm really not i'll, I'll say this though i see a lot of people saying that he has a gas tank problem because of that patrick white fight you guys try to go out there and fight that with that type of intensity with that type of pressure with that type of pace for two minutes and see how you look at the end of it i get it he's a fighter he should be okay with that but that was an insane pace to be able to keep up so i'll give him a little bit of a pass in regards to him having cardio issues uh just based off of that patrick white fight but I still think that he's in for trouble here against uh, Matt Favola, who I think is just a much better fighter overall. He's the better grappler. He's the better wrestler. He's a decent striker, but the only thing that's keeping me from making Matt Favola a lock of the night play here is the fact that he's just a little bit too fragile. He's a little bit too delicate in terms of his durability. He has three losses on his record, two of them where he's been knocked out, and it's not a good knockout either. Both of them, he's getting just put out it's not like they're just quick stoppages or anything like that there were bad knockouts and Gennaro Valdez could absolutely find that knockout in this uh in this fight as well but rather than play Gennaro at you know plus 180 whatever he's at plus 160 like I said I think the uh, inside the distance is around plus 300 and even the uh the KO line which hasn't dropped yet I'm assuming it's going to be closer to plus 400 it would be better to play that line because skill for skill i think frivola absolutely blows him out of the water everybody that frivola has faced is much better than valdez in my opinion and i think that frivola could wrap this guy up i think he could even choke him out in this fight if he's able to uh, get him to the ground which i expect him to do so uh violence is not a bad spot here the under two and a half is sitting around plus 100 i think that that's good that's a good spot as a bet uh but the way that i'm i might approach it this way i might not do it but i might take some frivola money line because the, the odds seem to be coming down now i remember frivola you know a couple of days ago was around minus 220 now the money's coming in pushing him down to minus 180 uh i'm gonna wait out fight week and see how much lower he gets and how much hype this valdez kid uh continues to uh produce from the public here uh but frivola money line and then valdez ko small just to hedge that out just in case of you know a valdez possible knockout so a couple different ways you can play this fight but if we're talking skill for skill Frivola runs through this guy as long as he doesn't get knocked out because again his chin is a, is a is a huge red flag um and that is deterring me from really going deep on Frivola in the spot but still I'm going to take Frivola and I'll take him to win this five year second round submission <laughs> 